Uh, hi, happy mid-June, a uh, delightful day here in Brooklyn Heights, but in terms of the global energy crisis, which isn't a full crisis insofar as energy continues to flow, I think you hit crisis when there's actual physical shortages, which we've kind of avoided up to now. But one market that we'll be looking at, particularly this week, is Texas, where we could see all-time record power demand on hot weather and a booming economy, and the potential for blackouts, which ERCOT, the major operator down there, is saying won't happen. But we are watching Texas closely uh, through this summer. It not only has a supply problem, although the supply side does look okay versus booming demand in a booming economy, keeping in mind that Texas is the ninth biggest major economy in the world, bigger than Brazil, and it's the fastest growing. It's not surprising power demand is strong. They have added tremendous amounts of wind, but they have a transmission issue, and transmission congestion is one of the problems that the Texans will face over this summer. It's also, by the way, the problem in Germany, where the nuclear plant shutdowns were in the south by the industrial load centers, but the wind additions have been in the north in the sea, and there's a transmission problem there in Germany too, which is now using more and more coal to make up for its power deficiencies, which was part of the energy regression that we talked about. You overstepped the mark in terms of the transition and actually you've now taken two steps backwards. It was also interesting to note Russia transshipping oil to the middle of the Atlantic to fill bigger tankers on smaller tankers, smaller tankers going from Russia to the middle of the Atlantic to fill super tankers. That's obviously an Asian trade, the more efficient way of moving uh, oils and the bigger tanker, obviously. And so what they're doing, obviously, is meeting the demand for discounted Russian crude in Asia, which is strong demand at a time when oil is $120 a barrel, and we haven't seen China come back in. So the incredible thing about this market is that Russia has been exporting oil. OPEC Plus hasn't been doing such a good job of exports, but Russia has been exporting oil through all this Ukraine disaster. And at the same time, we're at $120 Brent without China back from COVID yet fully. So it is a ridiculous uh, setup. We're also talking about uh, the beginning to think about earnings for the quarter, particularly we were talking yesterday day about Valero. Um, now the high estimate on the street is over seven, which was a call that we made for Valero to make seven uh, a couple of months ago. So we could be in a situation here where Valero makes seven Q2, which is this quarter, seven Q3. Typically Q3 historically has been stronger than Q2. Uh, that would give them $14 for half a year on a basically $140 stock. Obviously, we think it can go higher, and we've raised our price target from 150 to 200 uh, for Valero, and we're bullish on all the refiners. We have Rich Voliver, CFO of Holly Frontier, on our uh, happy hour strategy session on Thursday, so I look forward to that. And finally, I'm just meeting Embark, the autonomous truck players, the CEO and CFO will meet them tomorrow. Look forward to that. It's been absolutely crushed, but we continue to believe in uh, their software as a service business model of, of autonomous trucks, depot to depot. I've been in one of their trucks that are very impressive. And I think it could be a huge play for the future, notwithstanding the pain that the NASDAQ's in. So that's some things for this week. Uh, watch out for the Texas power crisis. Watch out for the oil price, given that we're still supplying Russian oil, but seeing China come back into the market. Uh, still very strong on refining. And I didn't even mention natural gas, which we like as well. Okay, have a great week. Thanks.